Good morning, everyone. As we come to the last day of our first full week of online education, uh, I pray that these virtual chapels have been both um, an encouragement to your faith and have united our community together in unexpected ways. Um, I continue to be humbled and so grateful for the team that's helping to make these videos possible, uh, to work alongside worship leaders who are willing to be flexible and to lead us in worship from their living rooms. Um, and for Cat Wheel Dryer, who has become something of an expert video engineer and editor over the last week and a half. Uh, this morning, we are grateful to have with us Courtney Doctor. Courtney is the uh, coordinator for women's initiatives uh, with the Gospel Coalition. Uh, she is an author, um, a speaker, um, a teacher. And as we looked at people that we wanted to invite to speak to us in this time, we wanted people who uh, both know our community and love our community. So in addition to serving on the Board of Trustees as an advisor, uh, Courtney and her uh, family have sent all four of their kids to Covenant College. Um, and one is actually currently attending. Shout out, Rebecca. Um, so uh, a big welcome to Courtney. We're grateful that she's with us. So now we're going to uh, reflect and worship for a couple of minutes with the Hill Sisters and then we will hear from Courtney. Um, God's peace to all of you. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Let us be known, let us be known by the way we love. Let us be known, let us be known by the way we love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord let your us be known. Let us be and love your neighbor as by the way we love. love let Lord us be known. Let us be and love your neighbor as by the way we love. Scots. This is a strange way to meet, isn't it? I don't know where you are. I'm assuming that you are in a bedroom or a living room or a basement. I'm actually standing 
in my dining room completely alone. And so this is a very odd way to, to meet. It's not what we're used to. It's not what I'm used to, but I'm also grateful for it. I'm grateful that we're able to still come together and open God's word and be encouraged by what he might have to say to us today. And so if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, open to Colossians 3. We're going to be in the first two verses of Colossians 3. And while you're turning there, what I would say if we were together is I would look around and I would try to notice about how many of you wore glasses. I've never really needed to wear glasses my whole life until a couple of years ago. And what I noticed was things that were too close I needed, they were getting kind of blurry and I needed some distance from them in order to be able to see them clearly. And at the same time, things that were far away started becoming kind of fuzzy on the edges. And so I went to the optometrist and what she told me was, she said, I'd like to prescribe for you a faded lens. And I thought that, you know what a faded lens is, right? It's a bifocal. And so I thought, you know what? The bifocal is like the eyeglass version of the mullet. It's a little, it's a little distance on top and near and close up for the bottom. And so I tried them. I didn't want to. I tried them, but I could never get used to them. They were always that going back and forth between the seeing far away and seeing close up was really disorienting to me. And it was really caused me to be quite dizzy. I couldn't focus on anything. I couldn't focus on the thing that were near and I couldn't focus on the things that were far away and so what I realized was that I just needed one lens I needed one lens in which to, to look through in order to focus in order to be able to see things clearly because for all of us the lens through which we look is going to greatly affect how clearly we're able to see things that's true for all of us and I think that that is what Paul is saying in the first two verses of Colossians 3. I think he's saying that if you want to see your life accurately, if you want to see your circumstances accurately, then you need this, you need the singular lens of kingdom vision. So open your Bibles with me and read the first two verses of Colossians 3. He says, if then, or since, you have been raised with Christ. Seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. So according to verse one, where is Jesus? What does it say? It says two things. It says that he is above and he is seated at the right hand of God. And so Paul specifies this location even more. Where exactly is Jesus above? He is seated at the right hand of his Father. And if you noticed, the verb tenses in this passage are extremely important. Paul does not say that Christ was seated at the right hand of the Father or that he will be. He says that he is currently, right now, today. In this moment, he is at God's right hand, which is the place of the highest honor and power in the entire universe. Listen to how Murray Harris says it. God's right hand is the place of unrivaled prestige and unparalleled authority. It is the place from which Jesus rules and reigns over all things. It's like what Paul said in Ephesians 1. It says that he, God, worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, which is far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. And it is above every name that is named, not only in this age, he says, but in the age to come. And so being seated at God's right hand is proof that Jesus is the rightful king. He is the eternal king. And it's from this particular, this specific location, both above and seated at the right hand of the Father, that Jesus, the king, the sovereign one, rules and reigns over all things. So when Paul tells us to set our hearts 
and our minds on the things that are above and then immediately reminds us that that's where Jesus is, that he is above and that he is seated on his heavenly throne. We need to be remembering things like Jesus' words in Matthew 6 where he says, seek. It's actually the same word that Paul uses here. Seek first what the kingdom, the kingdom of God, where the king is on his throne. And I think it's so easy to read Paul's words in our passage today in Colossians and think, set my heart and my mind on things that are above. And, and we, we think, well, maybe that just means I need to be thinking these heavenly thoughts, whatever those are. You know, maybe we wonder, should I be thinking about what I'm going to eat for dinner tonight? Or do I need to worry that my car needs new tires or which grad school I want to apply to? Or should I date that person? You know, maybe those are not heavenly thoughts. Maybe those are not thinking, setting our hearts and our minds on things that are above. But that's not what Paul is saying. When Paul says to set your heart and your mind on things above, he is not so much telling us to think about different things. He's telling us to think about things differently, to think about things differently. Don't change what you're looking at, he says. Change the lens through which you see it. Look through a kingdom lens, he says, and you're going to see clearly. And so it's not so much that there are new categories of things that we're supposed to think about. It's that we're supposed to think about things categorically different because of the kingdom of God. And so how do you think kingdomly about who to date? How do you think kingdomly when your best friend starts dating an unbeliever? Or how do you think kingdomly about your bank account when it's full or when it's empty? How do you set your heart and mind on things that are above and look through a kingdom lens for this this current trial, your current situation? Or when you get that promotion or when you don't get that promotion or when you get accepted or you don't get accepted to to the grad school that you want or make the sports team that you that you want how does the the lens of God's kingdom change how you view those things how you view all things how does seeking the things that are above change how you lean into those different circumstances so does the fact that Jesus is currently seated at the right hand of God, currently reigning and ruling over all things, constantly advancing his kingdom, do those things change or alter the way you feel about your circumstances or the way you think about your circumstances, the way you view them, the way you see them? Because for all of us, it's not just what we think, it's how we think. It's not just what we love, that's important too, but it's how we love. It's not just what we do, but it's how we do it. It's what we value, what we pursue, what we prioritize. And so Paul is challenging us in these verses to have our minds and our attitudes and our affections and our ambitions and our priorities and our outlooks changed because we are now viewing all things. He reigns and rules over all things, and so we are to view all things through a kingdom lens, not an earthly one. Because whether or not we wear actual glasses, we all have a lens. It's just important to know which one we're using. And so an earthly lens, this is what an earthly lens does. It looks around, and it sees circumstances, and it sees situations, and it sees hard things, and there are hard things, and and then it views God through those circumstances. So because things are hard, because things are difficult, because things don't make sense, because things are chaotic or uncertain, or because of my disappointment, then God must be absent or unwilling or unable to help in some way. That's an earthly lens. But a kingdom lens does this. It first looks at God. 
and it looks at his character and his nature, and it knows that God is good in all things, that he is sovereign and he is just and he is holy and he is kind and he is merciful and he is gracious and he is patient. And then we view our circumstances through that lens. And we know that he will somehow, even when we don't understand it, he is going to work all things out together for the good of those who believe. And so do you view God through your circumstances or do you view your circumstances through the lens of the character of God? Paul started the letter to the Colossians off by reminding us that Christ is, he is before all things. He is the head of all things. And as he tells us that in him, all things hold together. All things hold together. He is Lord over all things. And so we are to see all things through the lens of his kingdom, of his goodness, of his power, of his faithfulness. And so my challenge, my encouragement, my hope for all of us today is to, that we will be reminded that we will know where Christ is, that he is above and he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And as we set our hearts and our minds there in that place, that you and I will be better able to view our circumstances through the lens of the character and the nature and the goodness and the power and the authority of God. I'm going to close us in prayer, but I would encourage you to take a few moments when you're finished watching this and just ask God to show you what circumstances or what situations are you currently seeing through an earthly lens? And sit in those two verses in Colossians for just a minute, Colossians 3, 1 and 2, and ask the Lord to use them to help you set your heart and set your mind on things above and then to view your life and your circumstances, all things, through a kingdom lens. Let's pray. Almighty God, it is good to remember where you are. You are seated on your eternal heavenly throne. You are sovereign and you are good over all things. And so, Father, I pray that we would set our hearts and our minds in that place, that we would remember who you are. We would remember where you are. And, Father, that the things of earth would grow strangely dim in light of your glory and grace. So advance your kingdom in our hearts and our minds, even now, we pray in the name of our King Jesus. Amen.
salvation 